Is the entire universe a living being? Do we exist in a kind of cosmic superorganism? If you want to know whether you are just the intestinal bacteria of a gigantic life form, then be sure to stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'd be galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. You are living beings, probably at least. It's not that clear because there is no truly universal definition of living beings. We can probably say that living beings are organized genetic units that are capable of metabolism, reproduction, irritability, growth, and evolution. However, there are also borderline cases such as viruses, which are probably not living beings as they are not capable of reproducing on their own and do not have a metabolism in the true sense of the word. Viruses are therefore referred to as organic structures that are close to life, whatever that means. And it gets even more complicated if we consider that each of us in turn consists of countless smaller living beings. All the bacteria in your body, without which you would not function as an organism, are also individual small living beings. So in principle, you're a kind of soup of bacteria and a few bones that at some point developed a consciousness. Just don't say that on your next date. It doesn't work as a pickup line. So if we are living beings, which in turn consist of an infinite number of smaller units, then the idea that larger units could also be living beings, such as the Earth, is not so far-fetched. This idea is known as the Gaia hypothesis and states that living organisms interact with their inorganic environment on Earth to form a synergistic and self-regulating complex system that helps to maintain and perpetuate the conditions for life on the planet. Put more simply, our Earth, or rather the entirety of the planet's biomass, could be considered a kind of super-organism. And thinking even further, the question arises as to whether the entire cosmos could be alive, and not in some esoteric sense. Well, I can really feel the cosmic energies flowing through me today. But in a scientific sense, in other words, whether the properties of the cosmos can indicate that we are dealing with a self-sustaining organism. And perhaps we can also obtain the answers to the really big questions in this way. What is next to the universe? What was before the Big Bang? And why did space come into being in the first place? Maybe we'll get to the bottom of the universe, let's see. One point that could be used to see space as an organism is evolution. Cosmology describes the development of the universe from the Big Bang to the present day, and then into the future. The universe grows, elements, stars, and finally galaxies are formed within it. It all seems relatively lively. The classical evolution of living beings, on the other hand, refers to the changes that species undergo over time, including adaptation to their environment and changes in their genetic material. These processes are based on the mechanism of natural selection, in which those individuals that are best suited to their environment produce more offspring and pass on their genes to the next generation. At first glance, this sounds quite comparable, but at second glance, it falls apart. This is because the processes in the cosmos are based on the fundamental laws of physics and the behavior of matter and energy in the universe. This can therefore be described directly in physical terms. The evolutionary processes on Earth, on the other hand, follow biological laws, which can of course also be explained physically in a very original sense. After all, everything is made up of quarks or atoms, but they cannot be explained primarily in physical terms. If you left a cosmologist alone on the Galapagos Islands, he probably wouldn't be able to do much research. And if you left an evolutionary biologist in the middle of space, he would fare even worse. Hay would suffocate. There's no air in space. The situation is similar with another aspect, self-regulation. You could say that both living beings and the universe are self-regulating to a certain extent. Self-regulation means that a system can react to change in a certain way in order to maintain or restore a certain state or function. This is absolutely essential to be a functioning organism, and I hope you are all functioning organisms. For example, our body is always trying to maintain a constant body temperature. Heat-producing processes are activated, and heat-releasing processes are slowed down if the body temperature is too high or too low. You all know one process of temperature regulation, sweating. 
So let's ask ourselves whether the cosmos has something similar. Does the universe sweat? And which roll-on deodorant would be big enough to stop cosmic perspiration? Oh God, I'll probably get angry letters from cosmologists again after this video. If the universe sweats, I'd say the cosmic sweat is made of hydrogen and new stars are formed from it. Our sun, for example, is just a giant ball of sweat, uh, hydrogen. The rate at which new stars are formed in a galaxy can be measured. Surprisingly, this seems to be fairly constant. A report by the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy states, the process of star formation usually proceeds smoothly, i.e. at a steady pace. For example, the temporally and spatially averaged star formation rate in the disk of the Milky Way is constant and amounts to about five solar masses per year. So are we dealing here with a process of cosmic self-regulation? Again, at second glance, this is probably not tenable. We know that in individual galaxies, there can also be a sudden rapid increase in star formation. For example, when two galaxies merge and gigantic hydrogen clouds collide, there is nothing to suggest that this is then balanced out elsewhere in the universe. For example, when thousands of stars suddenly end up in a supernova in another galaxy. What can be said, of course, is that the total potential and energy and mass in the universe remain the same. This is what the rules of thermodynamics say. The first law of thermodynamics, for example, states that energy is conserved in the universe. This means that the total amount of energy and the universe remains constant, even if it is converted from one form to another. This in turn has implications for the formation of stars, as energy released during nuclear reactions within them helps to regulate their stability and the process of star formation. This makes the universe a fascinating physical system. But in my opinion, this is not enough to assume that it is biologically self-regulating. The fundamental laws of physics and the interaction of matter and energy in the universe create a strange system, but not an organic one. I would say so, but I'm super excited to hear your take on it. Could the universe be described as a whole organism? Or is the cosmos not a living being? Feel free to write your arguments here in the comments. I look forward to getting an exciting discussion going. One argument against the thesis that the universe is alive is primarily the lack of a recognizable purpose or intention in its existence. Living organisms have the purpose of procreation, and in Homo sapiens, of course, there are all sorts of other self-determined, immensely important purposes in life, such as sitting in an open-plan office for 40 hours a week and being trapped in a Ponzi scheme called a pension. But the universe, does it have a unified purpose? Probably not. But we probably can't even presume to say with our lack of knowledge. One point that is very important to me here, however, is that we are perhaps a randomly created tool of the universe to give the whole thing a meaning. We are sitting here on a spaceship called Earth hurtling through space, and with our consciousness we can think about all this and assign meaning to things. That is an incredibly valuable privilege that makes me very, very happy to exist. What a cosmic gift. As Carl Sagan said so beautifully, the cosmos is within us. We are made of stardust. We are a way for the universe to recognize itself. So is the universe alive? Yes, definitely through us. Every human being is a cosmic self-recognition machine, and I think that's a really, really beautiful thought. If you haven't had enough of this topic yet and want to get your cosmic self-recognition machine up and running, then you should take a closer look at the Gaia hypothesis. Or you can just keep browsing through my videos. And if you want to support the channel, then treat yourself to the shirts from the videos, plush planets, real meteorites, and much more in my space store. Every purchase supports my work. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.